Good morning, Cypress Village residents, and welcome to Coffee Chat. Today is Friday, September 22nd. My name is Ty Morgan, Executive Director, and we are glad to have everybody out there in the viewer audience today. So thanks for joining. A lot of content as usual, and we are very pleased that you are here joining us. So stay tuned, and I will wrap it up as I usually do at the end. Again, have a great one. Talk to you soon. Good morning, everybody. Happy Coffee Chat. Couple updates from the maintenance department. Uh, the first off, the healthcare roof was finished this week. Uh, they still got a couple of items to come back and do, but all the main work is done. The, which means the shark coatings for the front walkway is scheduled for the first week of October. That's only two weeks away. We'll have some more information next week as in which doors will be closed when and which entrances you should be using on what days when you're coming back into the property. So that will be a little hectic for a couple of days, but the finished product will be worth it. Uh, the putting green and croquet cord, everybody has seen the new grass has gone down. It looks fantastic. We have a couple of more things to do. We're still holding for the November 1st play on date. Give the green and the grass and everything time to get established before we get out there and start playing on it. So I'm very excited. It looks awesome. We still got some more stuff to do, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you'll see Tree Amigos in round in the next couple days. I've approved a bunch of different uh, cleaning out of the French drains in between houses. Uh, we've been doing it, but we're still going through. We found another about 10 houses that, or 10 more drains that need to be cleared. So you'll see them out there Friday, Saturdays this week and next week to finish that up. And uh, if you have any drainage issues, please call. We've had some people go to sales and to other departments, and I'm not sure why, but please, if you have a drainage issue, call the maintenance department. Uh, that's all I got this week, so have a great weekend. Thank you. Oh, good morning, villagers. It's Lisa Drew, your CLS director, coming to you from Ty's office. Um, I have a few updates for you and a um, couple of happenings coming up. Um, but first, I just want to put this out there. Um, we, I think I can speak for a lot of the staff when I say we love it when you residents wear your name tags because it helps us get to know you. Um, you know, there's a lot of you. There's a lot of us, too. It probably helps you when we wear our name tags. So um, anyway, just saying if you wear your name tag, we'll get to know your name quicker. Um, I also want to talk about signups. Um, if you sign up for something and you get the confirmation letter in your box and you get the call saying you're confirmed, um, please show up. Last week, uh, Deb Gowen had a um, active aging and we limited it to 15 people because we um, purchased um, masseuse to come in and we bought gifts for everybody and six people didn't show up. So. Uh, that would have been six people who could have come. So just sign up, show up, and everyone will have a great time. Um, I also want to tell you that the woman who does uh, Memory Lane, the media memory, um, she was going to be coming and talking about how to preserve your media memories. Um, she had a death in the family, so she won't be here t this afternoon, um, but we'll s reschedule that for November. Um, and that might be timely because holidays is a time where we start pulling out some of those old videos and photos. And uh, she's going to give you some tips on how you can keep all those um, lasting. So next week, obviously, the Fall Fest is coming up next Thursday. There is no charge to attend the Fall Fest, and it's going to be fun. Um, there will be a couple of food carts. We have a Mr. Softy ice cream. We have uh, crepes and coffee, First Coast crepes and coffee. And then we have Smart Drinks Jacks. They do uh, smoothies and juices. Um, you will have to pay if you want to purchase something from them. But we'll have a lot of vendors there doing free 
games with prizes. Uh, Bubbles and Brews will be there serving complimentary to you. Um, fall sangria. And it'll just be a lot of fun. We'll have live music and of course, the petting zoo. So um, hope you'll come out for that. And then um, on the 26th, we have the e-bike beach tour. Uh, I know a couple of you are gonna be in Key West, so. Um, but uh, if you signed up for that, we'll be going on the 26th at 9.45. The 27th is Mosh. We're going to there. The um, program is the big cover-up. It's about eclipses. Um, on the 28th, again, Fall Festival. And um, on the 29th, um, Jack Symphony Masterworks, the first Masterworks of the new season. So if you have a ticket um, and you don't have a seat, you got to see Julia um, in the office. So that's all for me. See you around the village. Good morning, villagers. Ashley Miller here, your resident services director. I hope you all have had a wonderful week. We have some updates from the wellness clinic. October 3rd, our flu and vaccination shot clinic is full. Publix will be back on October 17th and we will send out another survey to you all to capture your preferences on appointment times. October 4th from 2 to 3 o'clock, we will have an outpatient therapy meet and greet. Come meet your new outpatient therapists, Madison and Danny. We'll, have, uh, we'll offer our smoothie of the day as well as a tour of our beautiful new therapy gym. Also, uh, with the renovation of the wellness clinic almost complete, we will be utilizing one of the rooms to store your Guardian Pharmacy lockers. They will be relocated directly across the hall from the wellness center to the clinic. This move will take place this morning. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to come find me. A quick note too on our Publix vaccination clinic. The recommendation is that you can receive both the COVID and flu shots at the same time. But for those of you that are concerned about getting both, we do absolutely recommend that you get your flu shot first and go back and receive your COVID booster shot at a later time once we have more supplies as well. Um, we do have Publix vaccination consent forms that will be due today. If you do need one, the concierge will have extra up at the desk for you. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you around the village. Hi, I'm Dr. Sharon Phillips with Mental Health Center of Florida, also known as Transformative Health Solutions. I'm here today with my colleague, Dr. Connie Williams, who is also a fellow psychologist. And we wanted to talk a little bit today about the services that we offer to Cyprus. Yes. And one of the services um, that I'm very excited to talk about, some of you might know it before as our grief support group. Mm -hmm. And that was facilitated um, until recently by one of our pre-doctoral psychology interns, Sydney. And Sydney moved back to Texas. She was with us for a year. And we decided that after hearing from several of you that we would like to open up the group to a broader topic called life transitions. Yes. And that will cover any kind of transitions in aging that people experience. Everything from transitions in independence to changes with family members mm -hmm. um, to changes in driving privileges, um, health, all kinds of things. And that will be held starting October 3rd, which is a... Tuesday. Tuesday. Thank mm -hmm. you. Tuesday. And it will be in A6 from 1 to 2 p.m. Everybody is invited to attend. Um, Please come. <laughs> so you can meet Dr. Connie. She will be facilitating that group. So Life Transitions Support Group is open to everybody for any kind of transition you're going through. I also wanted to let you know that some of you may know me from the individual sessions that you've had with me, and Dr. Connie will be able to join me in also offering those services so that we can reach a greater number of you. If you're interested in some one-on-one -on -one counseling that um, will be totally covered by your insurance, you won't have to pay anything out of pocket, and you just want to be able to have that individual type of mm -hmm. emotional support. We want to be there for you. 
completely confidential. Yes. Right. So you can give us a call. I last time put my cell number on there. I'm happy to do that again for today. It's 513-484-8342. You can also talk with Lisa, Drew, or Chrissy, um, anybody in the Wellness Center that can point you towards us. I am so excited to meet all of you and look so very forward to your joining with me, both in group and individual time, to work through anything that you find is a struggle these days, and most of us have something, so by all means, drop in. Thank you. Look forward to meeting you. Hey, hello everyone. My name is Laurel Mundell and I am your Director of Administrative Services. To add on to what Ashley Miller was saying about the vaccine clinic, I just wanted to give a few clarifying details. So um, because Susan's not here, we are taking this on and um, helping Ashley as she integrates. So that's why things look a little differently this year. And I just want to clarify for all the residents, we will do our best to accommodate everyone who's interested in having an on-site vaccination. Um, so, but we're doing it this way because we have to be systematic about it. It's a different group of people who are helping organize it. So I just want to put that disclaimer there first, why things look a little different this year than they have previously. So for starters, the easiest way for us to get majority of the resident data was to, by sending out that text survey link. If you do not like taking surveys by phone, you can type that same URL, which is a website, that same website link that was texted to you in your home computer on the internet browser. So you, can, you don't have to take this survey from your cell phone if you don't want to, you can still take it on the computer. But we only texted it because not only does that get a quicker response, but it seems to capture more of our community than email alone. I think sometimes we forget about email, which I'm guilty of my, forgetting about my personal email as well. So that's why we did it that way. And we, through just texting alone, we had 170 respondents interested in appointment times. If you texted in your survey, either Monday was the last day to do so, this past Monday, then you were confirmed for an appointment time. You should have received a physical appointment card in your in-house box or in your house mail kiosk tube. If you did not receive an appointment card and you completed the online survey that was texted out, please call the concierge desk so that they can confirm your appointment time with you because we were able to accommodate all of them. There might, might have just been a missed, um, a missed appointment card. So please call the concierge desk. Additionally, if you need to cancel or if that time just does not work for you and you would like to try a different time, we are not positive we'll be able to accommodate, but we will try. So again, please call the concierge desk if you need to cancel your appointment, or if that time just doesn't work for you and you would love to try and, and see if there was a different time of day, call the concierge. We're helping out the wellness team while they're getting things all figured out. And then um, as Ashley mentioned, we are going to have a second clinic a couple weeks later in October um, for employees and then our residents in the higher level of care. We um, will we'll do a very similar procedure for that one as well. More information forthcoming. But for those of you who have appointments for October 3rd, please, um, if you did not receive that appointment card, call the concierge desk to confirm. Then uh, up next, Memorial Bricks. So um, I keep joking that Katie was able to make children and deliver twins by the time it took our brick vendor to return the pavers. So kudos to Katie for growing two humans and <laughs> beginning to raise them in the amount of time it took for us to get these Memorial Bricks back. But um, he assured us that it was there was a big project for the city that was that we were behind so um, even the 12 bricks that we had he was able to squeeze them in but it was probably 18 months after the initial order it took some time 
Um, Katie had done everything that she could do once she returned from mater maternity leave, including trying to find other vendors. And this is truly the only paver engraver in the driving radius that any of us would commit to <laughs> in the state of Florida. Um, so I, I do apologize for the delay. We did get, just get them last week. They're picked up. Uh, maintenance now has them and they're projecting that they'll be placed within the coming weeks. They wanna do some pressure washing over in that area, clean it up a little bit, settle some of the bricks that might've come, come up. So, um, it, but in the coming weeks, you should see those newly uh, purchased and engraved bricks in place. Moving forward, because of the circumstance we have with this being the only vendor in the area to do this kind of work, we are gonna just open up once a year uh, a time for anybody who's interested in a memorial brick and dedication of a loved one who's passed or just in honor of someone who's still living of a great achievement or a tribute to them. Um, we will do that at the last quarter of this year in hopes that we'll at least have it the following year around this time. So those orders are open and available no, um, now until December. We'll close it at the end of December, at the end of the year, and then submit the order to our engraver. Uh, if you need a memorial brick sheet, you can pick that up from the business office or you can email um, Katie Amador and she will be able to send you that. And there's some specific requirements for the inscription. We can only do three lines and I think it's 17 characters per line, which includes the space. So you're going to have to get a little creative if it's a long name or a longer inscription. But um, the bricks are $100 a piece. That pays for the paver as well as the uh, inscription. We do not make any money off of this. Um, so just know that on the front end. But um, we would love for you to continue to do that. It's a beautiful thing once it's out there. And um, I do apologize for the delay, but I think this will work well for us moving forward to just do it once a year. This weekend, the administrative newsletter will be going out to all residents, and there's a lot of great content in there. So, for example, there's going to be the renderings, uh, proposed renderings for the green roof. So you'll get to see what that looks like up close. Um, you're going to get to see the new Loon's Nest breakfast menu. That'll be in there so you can see some items. There's going to be some new faces there, some of the um, employees that we want to honor and recognize for their work, as well as some new faces that are coming in or returning faces and a promotion. Um, chef Tony has been promoted to sous chef for the Loon's Nest, so that's a fun little write up there. So please check it out when you get them this weekend. And then on um, as my final item, I want to talk about the Alzheimer's fundraising again with our grand total. <clears throat> as of today, we have the grand total of $12,048 for the Alzheimer's Association. Incredible job, everybody. We have now surpassed our 50% mark of our $20,000 goal. Great work. And um, through the coming weeks, we have about 44 days until our walk, our community walk. <clears throat> and um, we're going to have little fundraisers here and there to try and raise money. One of the things that Lisa Drew is going to do to help us out is have a dunk tank at the Fall Fest where residents and staff can pay to attempt to dunk our executive director, Ty Morgan, and then some other willing participants. So please make sure you bring some cash out so you can pay for the softballs. <laughs> um, basically, everyone but Dave Green. He made it very clear that he is not going to participate this year. He served his time. You would have thought he was a POW by the way that you responded to the request this year, but apparently that didn't go so, so, so well for him last year, but we appreciate his service. Thank you for your service, Dave. And then um, last year I forgot to bring it, but I wanted to show you this week the Cypress Village story. So any of you who donate a gift of $250 or more or increase your uh, previous gift to equal $250, you will get a free copy of the Cypress Village story. This is created by resident Mike Booten. And I just wanted to show you how it has a lot of interesting information in it about Cypress Village from the start. So um, it's a pretty thick book. Uh, I think there's 60 pages of the regular version of the original version. And then there's 12 uh, addendums, I believe. So it's a pretty 
lengthy document fun, full of fun information about the starting of Cypress Village and all of the improvements we've seen over the 30 years that it has existed. So again, a gift of $250 to the Alzheimer's Association will get you a free signed copy of the Cypress Village story. Thank you so much, and I will see you around the village. Good morning, this is Scott Marquardt for another edition of Coffee Chat. Um, first, I wanna just talk about uh, our tell guards um, in the homes, which obviously is just a, uh, a way for your home's alarm system to reach security. Um, we are most concerned with that signal actually reaching security. So we have been installing several tell guards in multiple homes um, that it's not getting to security. Um, those installations are uh, currently happening and we've been very pleased with how quickly the last 16 of them have gone in. Um, but we are also seeking to find any other residents that are um, that are without a tell guard or those signals are not reaching the security office. So we are going to try to uh, assist the maintenance team with um, those preventative maintenance uh, checks with, uh, with the system. Uh, so just look forward to seeing us around the, the village to, uh, to get that stuff taken care of. So. If you are interested in canceling a landline subscription and getting a telguard subscription um, just call the security office and we will gladly do that um, it'll probably save you a little bit of money and uh, we believe that the telguard is a better option um, and a more secure way of making sure that our signal is uh, reached in the office Good morning, Cypress Village. I just wanted to make sure that I got on here and gave everybody the word of the week. I have a bit of a phrase, so I want to start doing a little more than just a word of the week, and slowly but surely we're going to start going into sentences and paragraphs and all that good stuff. And we're going to start off with good job. So that way, when we're out in the hallways and we see somebody doing an amazing job, we remind them and let them know in many languages. And we're going to start off with good job, which is in Spanish is buen trabajo. Buen trabajo, good job, everyone. Thank you very much. Have a good day and see you around the village. Hello everybody, it's Hector Gonzalez coming to you from Ty Morgan's office. I gotta figure out a new line for that, that's getting old. Um, just a couple updates uh, for dining. Uh, I guess the biggest and most important update I have today is, is uh, breakfast starts on Monday in the Loon's Nest. We've got an a la carte uh, menu that we've got in place. Very, very gracious pricing on it. I think there's something on there for everybody. I kept it short and tight, nothing too big. We will take some comments back on likes, dislikes in the next month. If there's some changes necessary, we'll make them. But please, please, please stick to the menu. Um, Maxine is going to be uh, executing the breakfast along with uh, Julius. So um, th that'll be the front and back of the house team. Uh, it's from 8 to 10. Um, complimentary coffee will be served. It's my joke. It's not funny. Um, but we are... Um, we do have a component on there that does explain if you do want to use it for an exchange meal. There's some verbiage on the bottom of the menu that you can read. Most people probably won't, but in the occasion, because I was asked if you can use it as an exchange meal, we did put some pricing on there so that you can choose a bundled breakfast and then have a couple sides, which will accommodate for the, you know, kind of extra charge or, you know, higher price that you would pay by using an exchange meal. So you'll see it when you see the menu. We're excited about it. Um, it's, it's the biggest update I have really for this week. 4,600 menu started on Monday. Chef, Chef and Chef Shandrea and Tony are working on uh, uh, October 2nd Loon's Nest menu rollout. So, you know, a lot of things flowing, a lot of things moving. Update on the server, and I'm expecting in the next two weeks we're going to be able to start construction on that. There could be uh, a slight interruption in services from dining. 
during that time frame. Once I get closer and we've got the construction schedule together, and I, uh, Dave and I are working on, on that together, we may have a day or two, but we'll get that communication out to everybody so that they know well in advance um, if we are going to have a, a, an interruption. But we've, uh, you know, the team and I have been talking about this for a while, so we do have some plans. We have been planning for this, so we've got some good ideas that hopefully we won't have to interrupt service for a day or whatever it is. Anyway, have a great day. Uh, see you around the village. Bye. All right, I'm back. I hope everybody's enjoying today's information. I'm sure you are, as it is uh, very helpful content and information to stay abreast of everything at the Village. So with that, I'm going to start off with just a couple reminders. On next Tuesday at 11 a.m., we have our new resident orientation. So looking forward to all the new residents that have not joined us at a new resident orientation. It's a great opportunity for you not only to meet management and some staff members, but also a lot of new residents that you may not have met as well. So again, new resident orientation, Egret Hall, 11 a.m. on Tuesday, next week. Another reminder, which I'm very excited about, there will be no virtual coffee chat next Friday. Again, there will be no virtual coffee chat next Friday. We are transitioning the last Friday, as a reminder to everyone, the last Friday, Coffee Chat is not going to be Coffee Chat. It is going to be called Breakfast, Brew, and CV News. I know that's a lot to, uh, to digest, but uh, we're looking forward to it. We're hoping that more residents come up to Egret Hall and join us for in-person Coffee Chat. We're going to give a lot of the same updates, but it's going to be all live versus taped. So uh, you'll see the bloopers firsthand if there are any. But uh, please come out and join and support uh, Breakfast Brews and CV News. Man, that's a lot, but I like it. I like it a lot. Um, and that's, again, next Friday in place of Coffee Chat in Egret Hall. And I think you can show up any time between 8.30 and 9. So, but it kicks off at 9. Another uh, opportunity I wanted to take to share with residents is what we call manager on duty. At Cypress Village, we have a manager on duty schedule every weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So those individuals, we have an MOD for the healthcare center specifically. You don't see them obviously or talk to them very often, but they have their own on Saturday and Sunday in case of an emergency or a higher level of authority needs to be involved in something. So we've got it there. We've also got it in independent living and we have it in assisted living and memory care. We're going to start on a weekly basis informing our residents who those managers on duty are just so if anything comes up that you need to access or contact them, you'll know who to. You can reach them directly through the concierge. But this weekend we've got on assisted living, we've got Sarah Anderson and Sarah Anderson is our health and wellness coordinator for memory care on the fifth floor and she does a fantastic job for us. I don't know exactly how long Sarah's been with us, but it's been at least a couple years. So uh, Sarah will be at the helm for assisted living and memory care on Saturday and Sunday. And for independent living, we're gonna have Angelique Anthony, who most of you know. She's our human resource director and she will be on site all day Sunday, just making sure if anything comes up that uh, she needs to be involved in, she will be available. And again, if you need to contact them or you would like to contact them, feel free to do so through concierge. That really, I think, is about to do it. I did want to mention um, I am very excited about the announcement that Hector made regarding breakfast. We're going to roll it out on the 25th at 8 a.m. in the Loon's Nest. And uh, hopefully a lot of you breakfast goers that used to partake in that are going to show up for a little bit of socialization, maybe a full breakfast, a little a la carte breakfast, whatever it may be. But I hope that you all really enjoy that time again because I know it was was a long overdue, but uh, here we are, so let's be happy about that. So with that, um, I just got one more thing. I will be heading to West Palm Beach this weekend. We got another big golf tournament. I will keep everybody abreast of that. Uh, I told Katie I'd send her some pictures and maybe some videos just to spice it up a little bit so y'all can see what's going on out there on the course. But again, thank you all for asking. It means a lot, and uh, I'll keep you posted. Everybody.
All right, and on to birthdays. My favorite part of Coffee Chat is always to close it out with wishing some Cypress Village residents a nice happy birthday. So let's see what we have on tap today. Well, you're not going to believe this. We don't have a birthday villager on the 22nd today. So let's see what we got tomorrow on Saturday the 23rd, and we got a pretty good number there. We've got Mr. Ed Hubel, Mr. Herb Cork, Nancy June, Rebecca Cameron, and Mr. Wayne Jones. Happy birthday to you five. Wow. Five birthdays tomorrow. On the 24th, we've got two. We've got Miss Emily Beckham and Miss Joan Magadow. On the 25th, we've got three. We've got Dot Wilburn, Dot Happy Birthday, Mr. Bob Zellers, and my buddy Mike Booten, who is the author of The History of Cypress Village. Mike, happy birthday to you. We've got two birthdays on the 26th. We've got my buddy George Bennett out there on William Davis West. I'm sorry, Middleton Park West. And Miss Sarah Lee. We've got on the 27th, Bill Snodgrass. Bill, happy birthday. Yuta Tragnitz. And Mr. Richard Mulvey. Happy birthday to you three on the 27th. We've got three on the 28th. We've got Miss Emmy Douglas. Emmy, happy birthday. Sam Munapali and Donna Fast. Happy birthday to you three. And on the 29th, I'm going to wrap it up here. And I love this. On the 29th, we've actually got a husband and wife who have the same birthday. How cool is that? And I remember this every year that we say this. And that is Miss, Mr. William Wilding or Bill Wilding and Miss Mary Wilding. Happy birthday on the 29th to you two. And we also have Mr. Robert Warren on the 29th. Oh, I'm sorry, one more. And Catherine Gallup. Catherine, happy birthday to you. I'm going to wrap it up and just go through the 30th because we only have two, and we'll get them next week as well. And that's our buddy, Mr. Len Resnick. Len, happy birthday. And Clyde Krimmel, both on the 30th. So, residents, that's going to conclude another episode of Coffee Chat. Again, thank you all for tuning in. Wish all of your fellow residents a happy birthday. Have a great rest of the day and a great weekend. Take care. Bye-bye. <music>